Is it live? Yeah, I think it's live. Okay. Let me just squeeze this thing. Okay. All right, so. A couple days ago, I did this one. I don't know if you can see it that well. It's a, uh, just some sort of forest bullshit, bunch of trees. And then, <clears throat> yesterday I did this one. I, I wanted to make it more intense, so obviously it looks more intense. And it looks nice up close. I find that it looks way better the closer you look at it. Like when it goes down here, it just colors sort of blend together okay, but up, up close, the brush strokes are kind of nice and they're cool. Anyhow, so I'm gonna do another one. And uh, um, yeah, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be the same, but different. Okay, so, so I'm gonna remove this the sheet. Get a nice new one. Here we go. Right. It's kind of nice actually having paint that dries the next day. Okay. This time, I'm thinking, well, maybe, should I zoom in? Oh, I got everything ready, which is cool. Just turn down the music a bit. Got fresh water here. I've got my gouache brushes here. There's really just watercolor brushes, same thing. I've got my oil pastels right here. I've got um, my pencils here. I've got pencil sharpener and a place to put the scrappings, whatever you want to call the scrapings. And I've got my awesome high-tech palette, which is just the lid of this plastic container of all my gouaches. And something I always have off camera is I always have a, a box of Kleenex below my nose. <laughs> And I either have paper towel, or in this case, I actually have napkins. And I, I have got a garbage can next to me because I go through a lot of, <laughs> go through a lot of them. And very probably the most important thing over here on the right hand side, I got my coffee. Oh look, you see my bald spot? Where is it? Huh, I got a bald spot. Look at that son of a bitch. Looks oh look, look at that lush hair. <laughs> Fuck man. That sucks. Okay. And I got some club soda. Good thing I'm tall, so people can't see it. <clears throat> Alright. Now I'm screwing around. I think I'll zoom in a bit. Wait. I'll make it more centered. Okay. This little thing is just the paper from the top of it. I I've... That's what I think. Okay, so past two drawings or paintings, whatever you want to call them, pastel drawings. Wait, I want to move this up a bit. Can I move it up a little bit? Okay. Past two drawings. I'm going to pause the music. I don't want it playing. I can't even hear it. Past two drawings are just a bunch of trees. And I was inspired by this painting that uh, Klimt did, a landscape. And I'm just recalling it from memory, right? Like I remember it was very orange. And on the right-hand side, either a white tree or a, or a dark tree. Or there was a dark tree here and a, a tree that was half white, half dark. But I just remember it was so beautiful. Like all the – what I was trying to do is I, I love the little – patterns he made and also up here in the edges 
he had all these little intricate little lines and dots and stuff. Now he had a, his was a big painting, so he could do the details like large, and they look good small. And I can't remember what the painting's called. I'll have to go find it somewhere. So now I'm thinking about another. I'm th I just like Klimt's landscapes, the compositions. There's something like strange about them. They're all they're very often just big, big space. Like it could be like a big space with a tiny bit of like light down here. And, and in fact, maybe I'll do that. Should I do something totally different or do I want to? Okay, fuck it. Maybe I'll do something like that. Like here's one idea. It could be like this tiny, tiny little stretch of yellow light that comes through and then just disappears, and that's that's it. That's the whole. That's the whole composition. Or maybe there's a couple of these thin trees coming up here, kind of like that. Or do I even want to do that? Maybe, maybe maybe I have like these, uh, like a bush that just comes out of nowhere. And I'll tell you, this reminds me of a bush by my parents' house. Do I want to do that? <sighs> what could this be? Or do I just want to do more of those things? Sometimes I feel like... It's cool to do a whole bunch in a series that are similar. Yeah, fuck it. Maybe I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna do a bunch of ones that were kind of similar to the ones I did, so I can call it a series. You know what I mean? Like I'll I'll, I'll have explored that idea. I'll do like normally I try to do ten. I try to do ten similar ones so that I could call it like a collection or some bullshit. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Yeah. So fuck it. So I'll f fuck it. Let's just do this. Let's do. Do we? Okay. What about? Well, look at this, this street's green. Oh, this is a bigger one. Oh, this is a big, thick son of a bitch right here. Look at this. And, and, and maybe here's our horizon. Okay, yeah, so here's our horizon. I don't want that color. This one, okay, this one, why don't I do it freakier? Why don't I make it like blues, more blues, purples? Where's my, here it is. One's gonna be more blues. Blues and yellows. <gasps> Excuse me. Oh, this is purple. I thought it was blue. It looks like I tried to paint with this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's try. I did an experiment with the last painting. I tried a new streaming web streaming service, and the only reason why is because the world's most popular YouTube dude, his name's PewDiePie, has got 98 million subscribers. And he talks mostly about video games. And he was kind of getting it fed, fed up, so he switched to this new streaming service called DLive.TV. And I thought, hey, you know what? Facebook is such a monopoly. This guy has the ability to actually disrupt Facebook and YouTube. Let's so say he's on YouTube. That, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try this new streaming platform. And, you know, and when I went there, the people, I, I, there was actually, I think about 16 people were talking to me. So here on Facebook, the problem is most, it's mostly older people my age, old farts. Most people are working. So there are not many people who are live. Like there's three people watching right now. But when I went on there, there's lots of younger people. Like there's uh, a student from Guelph University, uh, and you know, it was much more talking going on. I had like you know, 16 people are chatting and stuff. So from my perspective, it was more kind of fun. But uh, there, I noticed some problems with it. One of the problems was I tried to post links on Facebook to it, but a number of people couldn't get to it. They couldn't. They couldn't see. The, oh, you son of a bitch! Couldn't see the videos. So I think there might be some bugs in that software. So I'm here today. Hey, John. 
So I'm here today doing this. So how this one could be different. Okay, what I do, did with the one yesterday was I kind of had like this light in the middle and I really like the light in the top. Yeah, screw it. I'm just not going to think about it too much. All I'm trying to do right now is trying to get like a general composition. Even though I already know, I already feel the vibe of the whole thing. But maybe I could do it a little differently this time. What, am, what could I do differently? What can I do differently? Sometimes it's fun just to you, you, you make the trees just a little bit going off in different angles. John Sullivan. What's up, man? Man, I had so many, when I woke up this morning, I actually had, I was thinking about this kind of painting I wanted to do today. And I had so many ideas. It was like every second, would, no, every every quarter of a second was a new painting. It was so fucking cool. I was just sitting there watching it going, oh yeah, that's cool, that's cool. And you know when you're sort of half awake, half asleep, you can't, you don't forget what's reality. And in my mind, I was like, oh, that's a cool, that was a cool painting I just did. <laughs> and I realized it was like, oh shit, I didn't do it. It was just an idea. What? A... Oh, God, I love those. Just all you gotta do is just do some freaking weird little shapes and stuff, and it becomes. It might probably is a knot right here, and then then do a couple of these sort of things here. Why not? There you go. Done. Freaking awesome trees over there. Whatever. Maybe I'll do another big one. Should I do another big one here? Yeah, fuck it. Maybe I'll do another big one right here. But I'll do it in a different color. How about this? Like, what about like a... Is this purple? Yeah, let's do it in a purple. Just to, just to make it look interesting. Okay, here's another big one. And then maybe this has a knot like... Right there. How thick do I want this one? Kind of goes like that. I'm actually pressing down pretty hard. I don't know if that looked very good, actually. We're done. I don't know. But there'd probably be a little bit of wood. You kind of got to feel the vibe of the tree, man. It's like, you know, that bends. It probably has... Oh, I just realized something. I've been doing these circles in the middle when, theoretically, they would probably go right to the edge, wouldn't they? <laughs> There we go. Maybe I'll make it more like that. Maybe I'll make it so that there's a... Yeah, like here, it would probably go right to the edge of these circles and stuff. So maybe this tree actually has bark. Who the hell knows? I like it because it's just sort of made up. Make it up. Here's the blue I was looking for. Oh, no, it's not at all. Look at that. You'd think it would be a dark blue, but look how light it is. That is a beautiful blue. It's like a soft, I don't even know how you describe that color. It's gorgeous. Okay, so maybe this is the color I want. But not for the outlines. So maybe if I just do... A bunch of like thin trees going up like this. My friend's son, when he was younger, would make sounds and draw galactic battles. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I think that's where my sound effects come from, honestly, from, like, play, play, you know, Star Wars, Battlefield Galactica, and uh, I used to play tons of Star Wars when I was a kid. I loved, I was definitely a 70s kid. 
Star Wars battles, space battles, and uh, when I go swimming at a cottage when I was a kid, I used to float around the shallow end and drop sand, pretend there were bombs, and watch them go off. The sand would slowly float to the bottom <clears throat> of the water, and you'd watch it, and it would like, spread out like a nuclear bomb, and I used to be... <laughs> used to be you know, like eight years old in the, in the water going, sh -poof, sh -poof. there's something about explosions that are cool. <laughs> yeah, I tend to do sound effects. It just sort of, it just feels right. It helps. It gives me the mood, right? It's sort of like the sound is kind of like what I'm drawing at the time. Okay. Well, maybe let's try, let's try red just to screw up and see what happens. Let's see if I draw some trees in red. Kayla. Kayla, thanks, Kayla. You like my sound effects. All right, so what about a, this red tree? Just so different and just, why not? So, if I'm going to do this blues and purples, what is the ground? How do I make it blues and What I could just... Oh, I've got an idea. I saw this artist, and he's like, God, it was incredible. There's this impressionist artist, and I hadn't heard from him, and I thought I knew everybody. Um, holy shit, was this stuff amazing. I think I saved it on my laptop. He would paint, and this is like the only subject he painted... He'd paint these blue flowers, these blue, these fields of blue flowers. And these are, I know good quality painting when I see it. And it was like, I got to remember what it was. So maybe, maybe what I'll do here is I'll do like blue flowers with green. Okay. And then if I want to bring in yellows, maybe there's yellows up here. I don't know. But it was just, it was just like mesmerizing how good it was. And it makes me feel like, oh God, I'm such a lazy fuck because like, I don't know, like the dedication. Each painting probably took a month to do. And I'm I'm so impatient sometimes. Like I just wanna like that's why every once in a while I have to do an abstract painting just because they're so silly and free and you don't you just you just do whatever. I mean I I that would my be a dream if I could just do abstract paintings and make money off of it and live because that's just fun. To me that's just like playing and doodling all right okay but here's the thing is that I love beautiful stuff but I, I like I, I, my my thing is like I, I'm like beautiful but also sad it's I can't help it and also it sounds morose but I can't help but adding a little bit of death in there and I mean death from the perspective of life. Like it reminds you of death. The death reminds you of life. So it's actually ultimately optimistic. But so I don't, I don't like doing like happy little fucking flowers and just for that sake. Like I'll do it. But I want to have something that's a little bit more meaningful. I don't know if that makes any sense. Basically, I don't, I don't want to do a Hallmark card. Which there's a danger of if you do too much that's just pretty stuff you know what i'm talking about if you just do too if you go too pretty like that's why i don't like renoir i don't like auguste renoir at all i think it's fucking bubblegum sugar pops and birthday cakes most of renoir yeah renoir it's kind of it's gross it's just all saccharine and fucking hallmark art i think he's super overrated uh is it renoir Hold on, let me just make sure I'm talking about the right guy. August Renoir. A G U. August Renoir. Yeah, yeah, his stuff is all fucking. It's okay. It's all. I'm looking at you know little cute little round faces with pink and blushy little brows and then you know happy little scenes and that's that's all right. I don't know. It just annoys the shit out of me. 
That's why, like, some of Klimt's stuff, where, remember he's got that picture of the old woman who's, like, fought, like almost dying? Like, that's, with the young, I think it's called Three Stages of Women or something, and it's fucking beautiful. Klimt gets a little bit too designy for me, too illustrative. Like, he's a bit too, too much on patterns that become really, really nice wallpaper. I still really do like his I like what I like about him is that he's he's creative and that his stuff has really interesting compositions. And I know for a fact these compositions I've been doing are kind of like static and boring. But I just don't I you know fuck it. Sometimes you just do it. I don't even think about it too much. Okay, so let's Okay, so we got kind of a a thing going on here. Let's see. Do we like this composition? I don't know. Okay. All right. So, huh? And what I'll probably do again is I'll have like like a canopy that kind of comes over here. You know, and maybe I'll bring the canopy right across. Like before I had what's called a vignette effect. It's a vignette is when you darken the edges. I purposely did it. Like I'll show you in a time. Though. Look here. You can see how there's a bit of darkening around the edges here and on this one, right? See the darkening? And it was just for composition and for why the hell not. This one, maybe I'll leave it more open so you can see where I started to draw, like outline where a canopy might be. So what I'm what I'm thinking is like this might be open sky and this might be the tops of the trees and stuff. And the question is now, okay, so let's talk about what the fuck do bluebells, I don't even know what they look like to be honest, bluebells, blue flowers, whatever, I don't even know what kind of flowers. Like, What if there's like patches? Here's kind of what I'm thinking. Patches like this. So what I'm drawing is like maybe these are where like this is all blue and mixed in with greens and stuff. And then maybe as you go further along, the patches are a bit, you know, more horizontal. As you get towards a as you get towards the horizon, the lines become more horizontal. The more vertical here, because you're closer. It's just, just perspective, damn it. And then maybe. Do I want to start? Gonna to have to check back later to see progress. Have fun. Hey, thanks. Hmm. So, question now is uh, it feels like could you use a third big tree right here? No, let's leave it. So, do I want to do a backwash of color? Maybe I do. The reason why I want to do this is that it makes filling in, you don't want to fill, you don't want to have little white gaps. Well, sometimes you do, but I don't. So I'm going to get little bits of colors I like, like these ones. Oh, that's nice. It's funny, you said it's tiny little dabs. That's all you need. And I need a green. Ooh, look at that. That's like one of my favorite colors. It's called Peacock Blue. It's like a blue green. Wait, did I just do that? No. Okay. I need a darker green. Grass green. Well, that might be the trick. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Grass green. Okay, so water at this phase it appears the trees are rising out of water yeah well I haven't done the ground yet so let's get the ground so that's oh that's rah ew. you know what doesn't even matter it doesn't matter what color because I'm gonna be probably painting in so many layers it'll yeah, that looks like blue I'm painting in so many layers I know I need white keep my white over here I'll be painting in so many layers now, this is just meant to sort of Tint the background. So 
sometimes fun. I like to just sort of squiggle stuff, and that becomes the composition. So I'm just following my my squiggly squiggly lines. Okay, so this is the this is the grass. Oh, too much blue. I need yellow to make more green. Hold on a second. There we go. That's actually kind of the color I was thinking of. I think that'll, that because it's a bit more yellowy. Always yellow and blue just go nice together. I saw pictures of these forests with this, um, these blue flowers. And they don't even look real. It looks like some sort of fantasy painting. So that's what I'm kind of I'm thinking of. Wait. Oh, I also did a painting. Yeah, it's there. In my parents' garden that has uh, these blue flowers. It's called, I called it Sandy's Garden with Scalia Flowers because that's what they're called. Of course, I wouldn't. I would never know that. I had to ask her what the hell they were. Every blue flower I see with lots of little ones, I call them bluebells because that's the only. Because uh, it's not true. I mean, what will probably end up having is a lot more, a lot more trees. I just sort of drew outlines of some for now. Oh wait, also maybe maybe the oh this could be interesting. Maybe I'll try to carry a sense of like light. Yeah. Okay, let's just try the blue now. Let's try bringing the blue. I think I want this blue. This is gonna. This is a blow your minds blue. Yeah, that's the blue. Here, let me show you that blue. <clears throat> It's good to bring in just other blues, just to just to mix it up a bit. So this is a one of the other blues I tapped. Like a sky blue. God, I wish I did drugs. It'd be fun to be able to. I just don't like to. I just don't like. Uh, what I mean is. I'd love to get rid of this ring. And it would be good to be like out of it. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'd like to get get a little escape. Well, that's kind of cool. Like the little, almost like abstract blocks of color over here. Maybe, as I'm looking at it on my screen, maybe like this could be like yellow. Maybe this is where the light is. 
That could be interesting. Let's try bringing in some yellow. I'll need yellow and white. I don't know if I have enough. I'm vacillating between wanting to stop and continue because I'm not, I'm not physically comfortable at all. I've got a really freaking loud ringing in my brain right now. It's so annoying. So annoying. Try some more blue. Wish I did drugs. <laughs> yeah, I say some funny shit, don't I? <laughs> yeah, I forget sometimes that, that there's people watching. <laughs> I gotta be careful. So my dream is to become a full-time artist and make money doing this so I can say whatever the hell I want, not worried ever about getting fired. <laughs> That's my goal. That's my lifelong dream, is I could just speak my mind. Because I have to be super careful, because I, I teach. And I'm telling you, you got to be very careful, like what you say when you teach. Students are definitely way more sensitive than they, than they used to be. Because I, I definitely grew up in a totally different kind of uh, mental state, let's call it, which was there's literally nothing you could say to me that's going to, like, really upset me. Like, unless you cause, unless you're, like, threatening my life or my family or something, like, you could call me a fat, fat, dirty Jew. <laughs> you could, I'm Jewish, so that's why I mentioned that. But you could call me fat, dirty, dirty, dirty soulless ginger <laughs> i just laugh that shit off that cracks me up in fact one of my favorite times paintings there are these a couple of guys there was one guy from from england and a, some guy from michigan and they were <laughs> making fun of me and it was like the best stuff ever one was like holy shit this guy darth vader because i'm i'm overweight so i definitely breathe kind of heavy plus my mic picks it up <laughs> he's just like is this is fucking darth Bra darth vader because the, the breathing Oh my god, I loved it. And I was like, you never came back. I was texting, dude, please come back. <laughs> uh, probably because I had a, in my family, you had to be mentally tough to survive. There was lots of teasing and lots, very little, uh, very little room for, I don't even know how, how you didn't even describe it. But you had to, you have to be able to take teasing. I don't know if it was like my family thing or a Jewish thing, but holy shit, you have to be 24-7. You're, you're going to be teased and razzed and, you know. Most of the time, I didn't mind. It was fun. Like, sometimes it was kind of annoying. But anyhow, just different things have definitely changed. That's okay. Every generation is different. Oh, yeah. Am I fucking this up? I think I said I was going to use... Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at my screen where I got two screens. I can see this one over here. See, what's nice about... Here, I'll show you what I can see. This is what I see. Where's my camera? Uh, desktop. Wait. Can you see my full screen? That's not right. Huh. The whole right hand side is missing. There's I don't know why I can't see oh anyhow. On my uh, on my screen on the right hand side I can see like my software, but it's not appearing for some reason. Well, anyhow, it doesn't matter. I can see my software and it's got this camera larger. 
And I can see the composition better sometimes than down here. Okay, what are you saying? That would give people a sense of humor. My family is the same way. We're always giving each other a hard time. Just makes life fun. Oh, it's weird flashing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so hmm. my horizon's up here. Maybe I'm just going to leave this for. Well, actually, you no, know fuck it. Let's just do this. What am I doing? What am I doing? Am I feeling this? Yeah, it's not. Uh, okay. Let's try this blue. Okay, so one of the nice things about gouache, if you don't know it, it behaves very much like watercolor with one major exception. It's opaque. And what that means is you can paint on top of darker colors. With watercolor, you have to plan it out so that your lighter areas are literally the white paper showing through. Because as soon as you paint something dark, you can't put a lighter color on top of it. Oops. So in this sense, gouache is nice because it behaves more like acrylic. So that's why I'm not sweating it too much. Because my I was thinking before I'd actually have a really, really light, like beat like bright white and yellows and blues. And uh, part of me, I was hesitating and I said, you know, fuck it, don't hesitate, just go and start, keep painting. And my point is, I, you know, I could always make this lighter after. I could just use uh, white gouache to lighten up the paint and I could have that effect if I want to. So that's, that's what I'm yapping about right now. Yappity yappity yap. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I'm still, still building up this base color background. I need to start making more. <clears throat> okay, the only problem about if I do it really light, then I gotta kind of paint shadows in, and then I don't know if I want to deal with shadows because I, I want this to be semi-abstract. <coughs> sorry, abstracted. It's kind of like representational is just the arty farty word for saying realistic or meant it's 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 implied to be the subject is mostly meant to be real life but you could do a variation abstract representational so it's abstracted it's a little bit unnatural and because i'm not using i'm not looking at any reference material i'm just sort of making it up as i go and just using just thinking you, you know yeah making it up as i go it's inevitably going to be somewhat unrealistic I like that. I like that better than painting from a photograph. Although I'll tell you what, most most people prefer realistic stuff. That's why so many people paint from photographs. And I just uh, I just don't get it into as much. It just feels like at what point are you just copying? At what point are you creating? You know, there's like a line somewhere, and it's harder to see if you're just taking a photograph and then using it directly. You know, I don't really see anything wrong with it. I've used photographs for tons of times, and some, sometimes it's absolutely necessary, especially when I'm painting people. I very much need photo references because the light... Oh, see you later, Mosa. Um, because the light... You know, there's there's just some things you'll just never know unless you observe it visually. I'm, I'm looking at my hand right here. Like, check this out. I would never have thought, because I've got multiple light sources, there's a window, there's a big light, a light over here, a small table lamp, and let me see if you can see it right here, there's a little bit of light cascading here, there's an orange warm glow here, there's greens right here, look at this dark, dark crease here, I'm looking top down, there's pinks and purples and oranges right here, there's, look at the light, being come, just a fraction of a light coming from here. And I couldn't, you know, as good as I think I am, I just, I couldn't visualize those subtleties. So that's why sometimes photographs are absolutely necessary. I think that's totally okay too, because that's just like painting from life. Like that's literally what I do. I love it when, when artists, you know, if they paint from life, you know that they're not, because it's easy, it feels a bit like cheating when you use a photograph, especially if you use tricks like, 
drawing grids when you're just composing like one grid to the next. And that's okay. People will come up and do it. Because I think most people do not give a shit how you created an artwork. They just care about the end result. I was talking to my buddy of mine. He's like, dude, why don't you just, 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 who cares about like, you know, ways of photographing? Just, just do it and pump them out. And, and I'm like, couldn't do it. Can't do it. Couldn't live myself if I did it. <laughs> and like, I think he is like most people. They, they don't care about like, the the labor of love of it like you know when i'm doing this i'm thinking about every little brush stroke i'm everything but every little thing and most people will not give a flying rat's ass why they'll just look at the whole thing and go oh that would look great above my couch but uh i'm putting my soul into every little thing i don't even believe in a soul but i'm putting you know i should say i'm putting effort you know, I'm putting care. That's probably a better way to describe it. I'm putting care and effort into doing all of this. And I guess that's that's maybe what it is, you know. And every, everything I'm doing, I'm thinking about, like I've done, you know, I put thousands and thousands of hours into doing this. And I've experimented just with hundreds and hundreds of paintings and each time I do this, I think, how can I make it a little bit better? How can I, oh, I remember I'll take this thing I saw once and I'll incorporate it in, you know? Because I do, I do really, really appreciate good painters. Like, I, I, I got a feeling where I can, I can really look at a painting up close and sense the person behind it and, and a mastery. I think that's what it is. I want to see a mastery. So I can't accept anything less of myself then if i'm going to be such an art snob and i usually don't talk about this because it sounds so fucking stupid and i mostly hate when people talk about art because it's just it's obnoxious and it's also so subjective but i am a, like i have i'm very very critical of of art if i was to be completely open about it but the, the hard thing with me is i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings right so most of the time I just shut the hell up and keep it to myself and only with my like very good friend if they really ask me what I thought, you know, I would, I would say something. But for the most part I'm like, I like to be diplomatic, you know, I, that's important to me is that there's a, there's a bigger picture here. Like who, your opinion is not that important. I don't mean you, I mean someone's opinion is not important. Especially people who think their opinion is important are the people that you should probably ignore the most. How's that for some serious babbling? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, what I'm hoping for... Okay, what was I talking? Oh, well, that's a cool language. I don't know what that is. Some... Strado... Stradinario Grande Artista. Okay, I don't know what that means. Luciano Del Gallo. Stra... Stradar, Stradin, Stradinario? Okay, grande means big, artist, artista means artist. It's got to be some sort of nice compliment. So, gracias, I don't know, is that is that Italian or Spanish? Luciano sounds Italian. I don't know. Wouldn't it be cool to speak a whole bunch of different languages? I've always admired people who can do that. I once lived in Japan for basically and almost exactly a year and after a year i could have you know pretty okay conversation in japanese and the coolest thing i remember was i started dreaming in japanese and that's when i knew something was up so i always wondered with people who can speak like 12 languages i wonder what they uh what they dream in I was never good at languages. It was so hard. And the only reason why I learned Japanese is because uh, so few people where I was lived spoke English. So you had to. Like, you want to go grocery shopping? You had to speak Japanese. Plus, I was teaching. And I taught, like, all ranges. I taught probably about half of them were kids. Then half of them were, like, teenagers and adults. And with the kids, you have to know some Japanese. Just to tell them, like, to sit down and be quiet, basically. Like just to get basic instructions going on. <laughs> so that's 
and and also I found that Japanese was a really easy language to learn, like grammatically and structurally. It's really cool. Like they have a very very simple alphabet. There's only a couple weird things like their R's and the D's. Kind of they don't really have the same uh, sound that we have for some letters, uh, some consonants. I mean, but every letter has a vowel consonant together. So wa ta ta te tu te to. Like we have consonants where there's no vowel part of it, but theirs is wa we wo wo ta te tu te to sa se su se so like that. So that's why when you've heard Japanese, it's very distinguishable because boku wa josh desu ne. There's like a very recognizable structure. Um, some cool things are you can rearrange the order of the, like in, in English, you know, you've got a preposition and a noun. Then a, you might have a, um, Adjective, then a, and, a, and a verb. Like there's a certain structure. The the you go get the green ball, right? Now at the end, for example, there's you can sort of mix it up, and it doesn't matter. Like you always know what the verb is because it has a it has a sound at the end, like es, for example. So you know that oh, that's the verb that I should be paying attention to. All right, I'm really just yapping on. Okay, maybe it might be cool. What if up here was browns? Let's try that. Let's just screw this thing up a little bit. Let's get some browns going in here. Browns. This will be interesting. You're gonna be like, what in the hell are you doing? I'm like, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. I need to get some yellow ochres and stuff. Sometimes it's good to like... Tilt on the side. I only do this because it's easier for my. I rest my my hand on my arm and it creates stability because I want to be more accurate. Okay, I should do two colors. Let's get. Let's see if we can find an okra. Oh, hello. Ha, look at that. Did I did I call it yellow? What does it say there? Yellow okra. Just tap the yellow okra. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. There's green in there from below. Oh, well, let's go with it. I'll just, I'll just take it and I'll merge it in. See what happens. In my mysterious... Mysterious landscape. I think it'd be cool if it just it did not go all the way over like it sort of ended about it ended part way and that'd be kind of neat like I have this okra no this is not okra this is more like that burnt sienna or whatever the hell the color was oh 
Oh, it's up here is my... And I'll have it just sort of like taper out up here. Like that. Let's get some yellow. Let's get some. Yeah, this yellow would be nice. What time is it? I've got this weird internal clock where I can feel like time. It felt like it's. Almost an hour. Like I, I don't know if you ever do this, but I'll like put the microwave on for like a minute and thirty-two seconds, and I literally walk up a second before it happens. Like this. It's one of my useless superpowers. I got a feeling it's like a. We're close to an hour. Maybe this is where I think I, was, I think I mentioned at the beginning. I was thinking yellows and blues. Maybe this is where the yellows and blues come come into play. We'll bring some down here too. I gotta start thinking. How am I gonna create? The blue flowers. How do I, do I do I actually show blue flowers, or I just do I do like just like splotches of paint to make it feel like you know like impressionistic kind of stuff? Hmm. Because if I'm gonna do real flowers, like. Just think of like Van Gogh's irises, where it's clearly an iris. Like he's definitely observing it. If that's the case, I'm going to have to find pictures of whatever the hell those blue flowers are, so I can draw their shapes. Because I just don't, I just don't, I haven't put in my memory. My memory bank does not contain. Actually, that's not true. That painting there. What did I do? I definitely came up with some kind of pattern. I'll have to, hmm. By the way, I'm just talking aloud. You could ignore 99% of what I'm saying. There's very little chance. Anything I'm saying is profound in any way. <clears throat> What's over here? What if it's purple? No, no, let's just bring the greens in the, let's continue. Let's just say that there's fields, there's fields of blue, I mean, of these blue flowers that continue all the way up here. It's a little bit too bright. I'm holding my breath. I tend to do that when I'm concentrating and I don't, I'm trying to keep my hands still. I have to hold in my breath, which is not good. It's like when you're lifting weights, it's not good to hold in your breath. Too dark.
Some sort of weird flash happened. So I wonder. Hmm. Okay, so we got a composition, some kind of composition. What should be in the sky? What did I do with the other ones? Where's, do I have a picture of my other ones? Well, hmm. Hmm, I need a kind of color. I gotta think of what I'm gonna do at the top. What color? I need a very soft color. I'm trying to I'm trying to save my white and gouaches they come in such a great range that they in fact I didn't even buy all of them. There's still some that weren't that I didn't buy. And a lot of these colors you could just get with mixing white. That's that's kind of like a little ridiculous that I got all these. I should have just got the primary colors and more whites. Um, the nice thing is, though, is that you, you're going to get the same color. So what I'm trying to say is oh, sometimes it's worth buying a wider range because you're guaranteed to get the same color that you remember had you bought this very – this called ivory white, which is – Really, just probably a tiny bit of maybe orange or some some sort of like slightly warmer color dropped into white. I don't even know if I want that color. I think I want a, a soft, I want a very gentle blue for the sky. Oh my god, look how, look how quickly that turned to dark blue. I just touched that to this. So that's, I wonder if I, where's my white? I'm gonna have to go buy my more white soon. Yeah, I put a huge amount of huge amount of white for gouache. That's a lot. Just gonna barely touch it. And look at that! How much it changes the color. It's already turned it into a kind of purpley color. So let's just start putting down. Let's just start influencing this this background, and maybe even this this. This part here, let's start throwing. It's very, very subtle. It's probably even too subtle for you to see, but I can. What it is, is it's also building a texture. Okay, let's try this, this uh, ivory. It's kind of nice. It's a little bit warm. It's like a very gentle, warm yellow. Also, too, it's going to cover up some of my my drawing marks that I don't like so much. So there are, there, like you see right there, I can fix that. I can fix those these lines that at the very beginning when I was wasn't sure what the composition would be, I, I drew some lines so I can just kind of hide them a bit and stuff like this. Like I can fix this. Just makes it a little bit better. I'm just starting to play with uh, texturing this grass. I really should do something about the top. What should I do about the top? This is a very lime color. I don't know if it's going to work. It's too 
two pastelli. I could make it unpastelly. Let's tap it here, tap it here. Hmm. I don't know. What could the what could this thing be up here at the top? I kinda want let's try these. What if I mix this green and this burnt sienna? What is that gonna create? Oh, look at that. That's kinda nice. That is kind of nice. I don't even know what color that is. It's like a greenish brown. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe I'll bring some of that down into the grass. I'll try to hide some of those drawing lines I did. Okay, so the bluebells are going to be crazy, like strong, intense. The <laughs> bluebells, whatever these, whatever these flowers are. I gotta figure out, a, like maybe what I could, oh, this is all dry paint. Like may, one option is, I could do something like this. Put little, little, uh, no, I need a fine, finer brush for it. Okay, how about, let's just start painting in some patterns. It's a bit of uh, fuck. Don't fuck it up. Man, I still got to figure out what color. I, I figure I'm not way more trees. What if I did some of the okay bright, like a real bright kind of this color? What happens if I just do that? Yeah, I shouldn't just do dots. I should try doing. Like lines and things and drawings and stuff, and just let the paintbrush do a little bit of the work for me. Take a break soon. Ooh, that's a cool color. Look at this. I love this color. It's like this blue green kind of nice color.
yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm, who cares if this thing has no bearance on reality? I think I'm going to make it more like a painting, just like a flowing stuff. Flowing and changing and evolving and turning into something. probably switch to smaller brushes and just to get different patterns i think that's important is that you don't get stuck on one brush because then after if you don't make a real conscious effort to to change your brush strokes it all becomes it looks too uniform so that's a that's a little technique i recommend to people when you're painting make sure you switch up your brush strokes if you look at what i consider great art people like van gogh there's a consistency to the style, but there's so much variation when you look carefully at it. Same with like other great artists like Degas, who's a wicked, wicked art painter. Lots of little variations in the brush strokes. And if you look at Cezanne, not so much. I don't think Cezanne's that was that good of a painter. He had some nice sense of light, but as a painter, bleh. And someone who is super overrated is Seurat. Surat was kind of like a garbage painter, like really not that good. Van Gogh know what the hell's going on. Tom Thompson got it. Lucien Freud gets it. Or he's dead now, but he got it. He want three painters, who I who 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 I consider some of the best ever to have lived. Van Gogh. Lucian Freud. Who's and who's who else would I say? I just mentioned someone a second ago. Lucian Freud. Oh, Tom Thompson. Like I don't think there's. I think that you know. Just so consistently. Their stuff is so distinguishable and such a mastery of what they're doing. And you could feel, I could feel each brushstroke was just so perfect, like wicked. Just, yes, good job, sir, you know? Like it just, they, they're just miles and miles above who a lot of people think are great. For example, Hockney, David Hockney. <laughs> Like, you know, okay, the overall impact is, is neat. It's very bright and, and you know, but he just wasn't like a master. Like, his stuff was interesting and unique and was not bad. Like, I'm not criticizing him, really criticizing him. I'm just saying he's, you know, I think we should give credit where credit was due. And there's only a few that, at least I think, were the real ones, were the ones where you could fucking just go, okay, these guys are at a whole nother level. And I do not like when people get credit because of just some sort of like, I don't know. For, let's just call it political reasons. I'm not into that shit at all. I don't care who you are. It's what you produce that I care about. Was I talking shit again? I was talking shit again, wasn't I? <sighs> Josh. Okay. I think I need to bring in some black. I think that's what's missing. The colors are too, too bright, and I need to 
bring in some darkness. I need to bring in some darkness. So let's go to Prussian blue is going to be beautiful, but wrong. Viridian. Oh, that could be a good green. Okay, let's just bring in some burnt umber because maybe I can start with dark browns. start giving some variation hmm like maybe 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 see all these trees I gotta figure out what to do with these trees these thin ones like maybe they shouldn't be so damn white like maybe They should have brown in them, like I just did there. I think I might just stop soon. I kind of have it. Some brain issues right now. Your pencil might be better. Oh, I haven't done any chalk. Like this, this will get kind of good when I bring in the oil pastels. Oh, wrong color. I meant this one. Like maybe I could just go in and just start doing stuff like this and it'll mix in with the stuff that there to create some interesting things I can even I can even draw with it too darker color. <sighs> don't I have any light green? I guess I don't have any light green. That's interesting. I had light green. See, I don't want this dark green. Let's just try this yellow. Ooh, that's it's beautiful. It's kind of like a golden color. I could use it up here. I wish I could use even like a light. Okay, what can I do about the top? Let's start start working on I forget what I was talking about. I'm just kind of in a bit of a zone right now. I don't know. I 
Maybe it's a good first start. Maybe I should just take a break. And then uh, step back, come back to it later. Uh, you know, sometimes I ask you how long does a painting take? And you see it's like two hours. The thing that, for me, it's not just two hours. It's like, like it zaps me. Like it, I might need like three, four hours to re like recover. It sounds so ridiculous, but it's, it's like I just did like some huge emotional workout, right? Like right now, I just feel like thin and like it sucked all this life out of me. Like I got to go take a nap. So it's like, yeah, okay. So maybe I just only spent, how long take? An hour and 15, 16 minutes I've been working on this. I swear to God, this feels, right now, it feels like I spent all day and I'm like, I'm like spent. Remember, um, what's that movie? Ridiculous movie with Mike Myers. Oh, he says, I'm spent <laughs> something. Yeah, so like right now, I gotta take a break and just chill out. Like I'm nowhere near feeling like I'm done. So it's not just two hours, man. It's like you put your like your you put your a bit of your life into it. All right, okay. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Maybe uh, I'll probably come. Oh my god, there's a whole bunch of texts I missed. Sorry. Maybe do a few realistic. Oh, I'm not good, Kayla. I'm not good with. I always talk to myself with painting. I'm the worst at taking input. Oh my god. So this is Kayla. You mentioned before, try doing some stuff. I'm like, if you want me to do something, just tell me the opposite. Because I, I, I like, I'm so like, I don't listen to anybody. <laughs> it's funny. So you should say, don't put realistic trees in the front. I'm like, fuck you. I'm gonna put realistic trees in the front. <laughs> Okay, what else does it say here? Um, I like the depth. I feel ready. Sunshine said yes to something, so I missed it. I love how you keep my guessing on what you're going to do next. Cool. You just made my day by using yellow. All right. That's cool. Yeah, yellow's nice. Yellow. Here, want some more yellow? I'll give you some more yellow. See, that's different. If someone says, like, you made my day, like, I'm happy to oblige, but I'm not good. You know why I don't like... I don't like when people give me suggestions because then it feels like it's not coming from me. Like I have to be the creator. It's the weirdest fucking thing. I feel like it ruins it for me because now if I did it, I wasn't doing it because someone else, it was someone else's idea. That's it. That's the, like when I'm into my art mode, it has to be me. I can't, I can't like, even if it's a great idea, I feels like now it's fucking ruined. I can't, I have to do it myself. <laughs> So that's why I get annoyed. There was one person before. I think it was Kim. So there's someone who watches the case of Kim, and she always tell me like something. I'm like, Kim, don't do it, because now I can't fucking do it. <laughs> I feel like, like I can't cheat. It feels like cheating. Like I, it has to come from inside a hundred percent, or it's not genuine. Something like that. Some ridiculous, weird, psychologically damaged <laughs> part of me. <laughs> That's probably most very true. Okay. All right. Here's what here's what's going to happen. I still this is going to be filled in. Right? And then I got to I think the colors are sort of nice here. Um look at my screen. It looks Yeah. And I got to work on the trees. I can add some more details. I'm going to add a lot more trees up here and a lot of like li maybe li like little details of branches like that and the sky isn't going to be so open i think it's going to be filled in with like what's missing right now it's just it so cleanly ends it looks like just the end of the world and it doesn't look good so i think as if, there needs to be the trees like as if this is a hill going up there should be smaller thinner trees and you know that's that's where i think i'll go with it but you know what like so, like i also like I love those stupid bullshit ball drawings. Here, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. 
I just did, I did a bunch of these and I love doing these. Literally, they're just sort of like these abstract ball things. And I kind of go with the flow and it just, it just, they just sort of come out and I, and I really like doing it. Now, problem is, this is like that stuff that anybody could do, right? For the most part. And it's kind of like that stuff, which is my kid could do that kind of thing. And it's, there's some truth to it. But I would do more of those things. If I got some hair, let me go to front. Okay, so I would do more of those things. Oh, nice hair, dude. Nice, nice mop. Gotta get a haircut. See, I'd do more of those things if uh, people like them, I guess. Not not if people like them, but I'd like to, st I should start trying to sell my paintings. And, uh, like doing those is very, it's almost like energizing because it's so whimsical and silly and fun. And and I don't feel like I'm dying every time. Like when I was like doing that landscape stuff, it's actually very taxing on me. And it's like, it's like, holy shit, this is hard. And like, you know, it's like needless suffering sort of. It, sound, it sounds so melodramatic. But I would, if I got encouraged, say, to do more of those, I would totally do more. And I would be happy to. I'm mean, I, I just. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I still have to build the e-commerce part of my website so I can start selling shit. But um, I don't know if people out there are like that kind of stuff. I would be more than happy to do more because I, I love it, man. I mean, I might even do some do some more. But uh, yeah, so that's just my two cents. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go clean up my kitchen now. Do some dishes. Take my dog for a walk. I'm avoiding do all kinds of work I need to do. I figure those are some good pro procrastination things. Do my dishes, my kitchen, uh, walk my dog. Right there, she's very quiet. Yeah. All right. Peace out. Maybe I'll maybe I'll be back later. Oh, more text. Watching this has inspired me to get out my brushes right on. I've had I've had three years of painter's block. Thank you. Enjoy your Oh wow, yeah. My best thing for that is just fuck it. That's totally how I That's why I was doing those little circle things, is I just like, you know, screw it. Pew.